Uh, it's time for the math. Easy solution. Turn discuss integration and now using tables of integrals and basically go over an example. That's example one of the video series. Yes, yeah, so basically tables of indefinite integrals are very useful when we are confronted by an integral that is well difficult to evaluate by hand and we don't have access to an, a computer algebra system or a CAS. In other words, in the case basically we don't have internet access as there are nowadays there's many online CAS calculators. You could just Google search and you'll find a bunch. And basically, uh, I'll be using the table of integrals found in my calculus book, and you could view that table by going to the URL tinyurl.com slash integrals mes. So if you were to click it, what comes up is just a, oops, clicked it twice. It comes up is just, it goes to my OneDrive and has the PDF of the, the table of integral formulas. It's about 120. I'll close this. I'll open up this, basically, this exact PDF you could download. So there's about yeah that you could do basic integrals, uh, random forms like this. There's also trig trig uh, formulas, inverse trig. Yeah, there's about 120. This is relatively small, but there's other tables you can find online with thousands of uh, table with thousands of formulas. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Let's get back to this. Basically, uh, it's also important to note that it should be remembered that oftentimes integrals do not occur exactly in the form listed in a table, and usually we need to use substitution or algebraic manipulation to basically transform a given integral into one of the forms in the table. So that being said, let's get to an example. So this one right here states the region bounded by the curves y equals arc tan of x, the same thing as inverse tan of x, uh, and y equals 0 and x equals 1 is rotated about y, about the y axis. So these the region is bounded by these uh, curves or lines in these two cases and then now it says find the volume of the resulting cell uh, solid. So this is also if you went to my earlier video, this is a case using cylindrical shells where we could find integral using that way. So if I go like this, if I graph this out, recall that the inverse uh, tan looks something like this, goes to infinity like that. Let's draw this better. So this is inverse tan of x. And now it's bounded by the line y equals 0. That's just the uh, x-axis. And then x equals to 1. So that's this part right here. x equals to 1. So this is the region that we are dealing with right here. So this is the region R. I'll just put an arrow. That's the region. I'll just write region. So now we need to solve the volume and recall the cylindrical shells. If we draw a vertical shell like this and assume it has an infinitely small uh, thickness dx. So then at the center here, we'll call this, well, distance of x right here. So it goes to x, it's the thickness of dx, and this height right here, that's well, this is the function. So that's just tan, inverse tan of x. And then when we rotate it about this y-axis, we get basically like something like this. And then this is the center one, something like that. Yeah, so we basically get cylindrical shell like this. And that's the volume of one of them. And then we would just sum up from basically from here to here, which is 0 to x equals to 1. So um, x equals to 1. And this is, uh, yeah, that's one of the shells. So the volume is, recall the method of cylindrical shells. You see well, my earlier videos in greater detail. So the, the volume is, again, it's going to be, well, yeah, this, this top area, which is basically... Yeah, so basically where this area right here is equal to, well, we could use the circumference of the circle. So that's just going to be, well, the circumference is is just uh, C times, uh, yeah, the circumference is just 2 pi and then R times it by the distance dx. And in this case, our R radius, that's just equal to X. So our area is equal to... 2 pi x dx, and then the volume, that's just going to be, well, area times times by the height. So in this case here, and then we're going to also sum up from 0 to 1, so in this case it's going to be 0 to 1, 
of 2 pi x ten, inverse 10 of x dx. So that's what we have right here. And now if we look at our table of integrals, scrolling up to uh, inverse trig right here, we see this one right here, which is uh, u inverse 10, uh, yeah, inverse 10 u equals to this right here. Yeah, so that's this n number 92 right there, and then we could copy and paste that in. Yeah, so this table, uh, this formula from that table, as you can see, this exact same thing here, where our u is equal to x, and then this is the inverse 10 of u right here. We could, we, we could just take this 2 pi out of there. So we get, then we could use this, and the answer is uh, u squared plus 1 divided by 2 times by inverse 10 of u minus u over 2 and plus constant c, but we don't need to include that because we're using a definite integral u to 1. So this equals 2, take the 2 pi out of there, 0, 1 of x, 10 of x dx equals 2, 2 pi, and then this is going to be x squared plus 1 over 2 inverse 10 of x minus x over 2 from 0 to 1. So now we can plug those inside. We get 2 pi, take this out, 1 plus 1 over 2, 10 inverse 1 minus right here 1 over 2 and then minus uh, the 0 in there so we have a 1 over 2, 10 inverse 0 minus 0 right there. And now finding out these values, uh, recall that basically if you had theta equals to 10 inverse 1, I'll call this theta 1. Uh, this just means writing 10 theta equals to 1. And then recall this triangle right here. This equals to opposite over adjacent. So this is opposite over adjacent. This is just 1 over 1. And recall that this is just a uh, perfect this is perfect uh, 45 degree angle which equals to pi over 4 so theta equals to pi over 4 theta 1 then for looking for this one here theta 2 equals to inverse 10 of 0 so rearrange this again we have 10 theta 2 equals to 0 and this again is opposite over adjacent so the only way we have this is where opposite equals to zero it doesn't matter what adjacent is and that's only when you have a perfectly straight line like this where you have a zero and then adjacent so this is just well angle zero theta two is equal to zero so what that means is well this yeah this equals to zero so this goes to uh, zero yeah, this equals to 0, and this part right here equals to pi over 4. And now we could just plug these inside. We get v equals to 2 pi. There's a bracket there. 2 over 2. 2 over 2, then pi over 4 minus 1 over 2. And then these just cancel as 0 right there. So this is what we have. This cancels we're left with now equals 2, there's a 2 over 4, so 2 pi squared over 4 minus 2 pi over 2, and this equals 2 pi squared over 2 minus pi. Yeah, and that is the answer, and basically, yeah, this is a pretty neat answer, and as you can see, using that that formula from the table saved a lot of time because deriving this it, it would take quite a bit of time uh, solving this for to get to over here and yeah it just shows uh, how you could quickly solve and also make sure to watch more on a cylindrical shells method if you haven't already in my earlier videos anyways that's all for today if you learn from this video and like always you can download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution